Thank you. Hit it, Steve. This story takes place in New Delhi, the capital city of India. I was finished with work, and I had a day and a half to relax. But then I read this story in a newspaper about these kids that go to school under a bridge. And I thought, I have got to go meet these kids and find out what it's all about. So I went about to find the uh, reporter who wrote the story and contact um, the teacher. And when the teacher and I talked on the phone, I had to hang up on him because I don't speak Hindi and he didn't speak English. So my travel agent helped me communicate and get me on the road. Um, I jumped in a taxi and the, the um, <laughs> that, that's not how I looked at the time. I was frantic, like, oh, faster, faster. It's going to take us 45 minutes to get there and they're only in school another hour. And I really wanted to take their pictures. So when I arrived, I saw, ah, there we go, 60 children sitting on their mat um, taking lessons under this enormous bridge that protects them from the, from the environment and uh, the thick cement um, where they paint the black paint for their, for their chalkboards. Um, this school has um, 60 children. They're, they're ages from 3 to 15. 75% um, of them are boys. These kids do not go to government school. They don't go to school all day. They just come here for a couple of hours because they need to work. Hmm. Well, here are their teachers. On your left is Laksh Lakshmi Chandra. He, he speaks English very well. And on the right is the founder of the school, Rajesh Kumar Sharma. Sharma. And uh, Rajesh, three years ago, started the school because he was driving to work and he noticed these kids playing under the bridge um, in the mud, um, young and not getting an education, and said uh, to himself, they're wasting their youth, they should be getting educated. So he went to their parents, and um, some of their parents, and said, you know, what, you should allow your kids to come to school, I'll teach them two hours a day under the bridge. And he said it was very difficult to uh, convince the parents of this. Well, because the children have to earn money for their family. So they live in the slums, and slums being defined as inadequate housing with no running water, electricity, or sewer. And um, the kids may beg, steal, or um, do menial labor for, for maybe 200 rupees a day. That's about three American dollars. So the teachers teach Hindi, the native tongue, Sanskrit, English, math, science. Um, and English is the medium of instruction in India. That's why you see this textbook in English. So <clears throat> he doesn't look very serious, but I tell you, all the kids were very serious. They, they take their education like someone would take a life preserver. You know, they, they sit there and they, you can just feel them absorbing um, whatever. Who, and there's older students who teach as well. On your left is Kunti Kumari. She's 12, and she's friends with... Um, uh, Bubbly, Bubbly uh, Kumari. They have the same last name, but they're just friends. And um, they're the oldest girls in the school. And usually girls in India quit going to school, government school anyway, um, because of the, the, you know, there's no toilets. Um, well, there was a toilet, and it was a bucket behind a Visqueen wall. So <laughs> in India, you can, there's plenty of government schools, and 90% of their schools are government. And you need a birth certificate, and you need to be at your grade appropriate age level. And these kids were born, most of them are born in the dirt floors that they live on, and they did not recorded birth. And also, they started working so young that they, you know, they're, they're, they don't know how to read and write at age 10. So that's where Rajesh comes in, is he has, um, he teaches these kids the basics and gets them up to their grade level. And um, so they can still go to work and come to school. He has, he's brought 70 children up to their grade level, um, and they're now entered into government school, which is a huge accomplishment because that means the parents are allowing their kids to actually go to school, that they don't need that income as much anymore. This is Bharat Mandal. He's 15. 
his favorite subject is math. Um, he, I think he just kind of shakes when he talks about it. He's just so impressed with numbers. And he, um, he's finishing his eighth grade level, and he would like to go on to school. Uh, this is Rinky. She has a twin sister, and they're seven. They've been going to school for a year. She wants to continue going to government school. That's a or going to school, that's a quote from her. And I think that means that, you know, she wants, she likes school, she doesn't want to go to work. And the young kids come to this outdoor school with their siblings, and Rajesh likes these little kids to come and join in. Um, it's, it's a really wonderful example to them of education. So, I well, guess they're done for the day. So they meet for school six days a week, two hours a day, from 9 to 11, and then they go off to work. There's 20 million people in New Delhi. This is a photograph of a private school. These girls are on a bus going on a field trip to see a historical site in New Delhi private school in, in uh, India is a lot like our public schools, but hardly anybody can afford a, a private school in India. The population of India is like 1.2 billion people. So at the end of the day, the mats rolled up, and I have two questions I'd like you to take home with you tonight. One is, where would you be today if you had never received an education? And secondly, Having received an education, what can you give? Thank you.